See this guy right here? This is me. He is really excited to be somewhere new, where he can explore new foods, drinks, ideas, landscapes, cultures. Seems like fun times are just around the corner. But there's a problem. This guy has some serious social anxiety issues. Right now, he's hanging out in a French hotel parking lot while trying to avoid people. He wants to grab some breakfast, but there are way too many people inside eating, and he is way too nervous. He is worried that people will make fun of him for being a fat American that doesn't speak French. That may very well be the case, but he is hungry, and the room was a bit expensive, and he wants to get his money's worth. For years, he's avoided dealing with his social anxiety and shyness, but now it's time to confront it. So here I am in Europe, more specifically Lisbon, Portugal. So much for being shy. There are people everywhere, and I can't just hide from them like I did in America. It's so densely packed here that I am forced to come out of my shell. And not only am I American, but I am also a 5'10", 250 pound black guy in Western Europe where people are pretty small, so I stand out quite a bit. And it can be hard dealing with all the stares when I'm already an anxious person. So that brings me to the focus of this channel, coping with anxiety while still challenging myself to explore, travel, and learn. Every week I will push myself to get off the couch, get out there, and walk around the cities and countryside of Europe. I'll discuss topics related to the challenges that shy and anxious people face in different scenarios. You'll be able to see parts of this adventure in 4K, slow TV mode. I will visit much of Portugal and make my way to other countries. I will do this by train, bus, and ferry, or any other kind of ground or water transportation, but no planes. Maybe one day I'll make a channel about challenging my fear of heights, but not today. Now, if you're wondering about the math part in the title, well, that's for me. When I'm not walking around or making content, I'm working on my goal to learn as much math as I can before I die. Because why not? Being American in Europe is really kind of interesting. More than you'd think. For starters, I was shocked to see how much thinner people were than the average American. In Lisbon, for instance, I have to walk several blocks before seeing an obese person. It's like I'm the only one. Even by San Francisco or LA standards, People are very small here. To keep myself from thinking every stare is asking, hey, why are you so fat? I decided to think of it as confusion rather than insult. And that has pretty much been my only compromise so far, especially considering people will stare at you for sure. And they're not necessarily mean stares, but they're rather neutral stares. Not to say you won't get a mean stare here and there. Here's a little food for thought. Maybe it's not really that the rest of the world stares a lot, but maybe it's a normal thing for people to stare at each other, and it just happens to be unsafe to do it too much in America. Now, even when you do see a bigger person, it's usually an older guy who looks to enjoy the occasional super bock here and there. I, on the other hand, look exactly like what you'd expect from America. And I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I laugh when I think about how I hopelessly pull my arms together on the train, trying to give the person that sits next to me their rightful space back. And if being stared at isn't bad enough, well, here comes the sweat. Believe it or not, Lisbon is pretty humid, way more than you might think. Take a look at the data. Go look at an almanac. It reaches its max humidity around two o'clock in the morning, unless it's already raining. And I've seen it close to 100% on sunny days. I think because we really notice humidity in the summer, we forget about all the humid places that actually have a more temperate climate. The result is you will sweat outside even if it's like 68 degrees. And it'll be worse if you're a heavy person and tenfold if you're walking up one of those famous Lisbon inclines, which by the way, your favorite YouTuber forgot to mention that they were using a wide angle lens when they were filming here. It makes the hills appear flatter. Just wait till you get here. Now, if you're like me and you're a big person, you're gonna sweat and you're gonna get stares. There's nothing you can do about it. But to help with the sweating, I've been walking very slowly down the streets, avoiding steep inclines when possible. This brings me to my next point. The average person in Lisbon isn't walking that fast. Now I'm talking about in relation to the average American city. I'm still investigating why this is the case, but my best guess is there are a lot more elderly people walking around town than there would be in Phoenix or Albuquerque. And also the Portuguese are just way more relaxed. 
So if you ever just sit there and watch people walk, they don't seem to be in a huge rush. So when you arrive here from America, you're walking so fast like you have somewhere to be, and it really makes you stand out. It took me a while to figure this out. Just slow down. I've already learned to walk slower and pace myself walking through town. I mean frantically trying to get to the park just so I can sit there and relax makes no sense. I've also realized that there isn't much I can do about the hills but try to avoid them if possible or even take another route that's more gradual to the top. Over time I've gotten better at walking and I've noticed that my sweating and heavy breathing has leveled off a bit too. Now that I can walk around the city of Lisbon and not sweat, the next thing I noticed were people staring at my shoes and my clothing in general. So this only really applies to the super casual laid back dressers such as myself. And when I say this, I'm talking about tan cargo shorts, New Balance, and black t-shirts. This'll definitely get you some stares here, or at least let everybody know you're definitely from America. If you pay close attention, you'll see that most people are actually dressed pretty nice. And even the people that are dressed down are dressed way better than you. It almost seems like they pulled an outfit off of a mannequin at the mall and put it on. For me, this has been pretty tough because I love my cargo shirts. I want to mention that I came directly from Phoenix to Lisbon in the end of the summer. I came from a very hot, bone dry climate to a moist, warm climate. I don't even own seasonal clothing since Phoenix doesn't really have seasons. You can wear shorts on most days in the wintertime in Phoenix. The only compromise I could find in Lisbon was to wear nice clothing that still kept me cool, like tan pants, casual dress shoes, and a nice light shirt. I had heard somewhere before that Europeans don't casually wear athletic clothing like Americans do, so I try to keep that in mind. Another big consideration is clothing culture with respect to seasons. In Lisbon, you'll notice that people are dressing the season even if the summer, fall, and winter temperatures remain 65 degrees. So to someone from the low desert regions of the Southwest, this is really confusing. To me, this would be an opportunity to just wear the same thing all year round, but that turns out not to be the case. Instead, as soon as the rainy season came around, people began wearing jackets, scarves, and light coats, even though it was still like 65 degrees. In Phoenix, most people would wear whatever they felt comfortable in. So on a 60 degree day in Phoenix, you would see somebody dressed like me with shorts and a t-shirt, or you might also see a person with pants and a jacket, just whatever. I've not seen this once in Lisbon, unless a person is jogging. So if your priority in coming to Lisbon or other parts of Europe is to blend in a bit more and mitigate stares, I would suggest dressing more like the locals, meaning dress the season and be ready for any changes in the forecast. Your cargo shorts from Target, along with that $8 Batman shirt, is definitely gonna make you stand out. I'll speak more to Germany and France when I go back there, but this appears to be the case in those places as well. Someone let me know if they agree in the comments. Another thing that might make you stand out is how loudly you're speaking. You'll notice other Americans right away because they are talking louder than everyone else. Now, although I'm shy, I have a pretty deep voice. So when I speak, my voice carries pretty far. And sometimes I'll see people across the street turn around wondering like what's going on. So I try to be mindful of how I'm talking. Now, this channel isn't meant to tell people how to dress, walk, or talk in order to get along better in Europe. Instead, it's how I work on my mental health by reducing the kinds of things in my life that trigger anxiety. Some of the items I discuss may help other people. I know there are other extremely shy people out there and they might want to hear these words. I refuse to travel and not experience life to the fullest. For someone who will sweat in the presence of too many people or avoid eye contact when meeting someone for the first time, this journey I'm on means everything to me. I am chipping away at my comfort zone. No need to shatter it. I'm taking baby steps towards my goal of uncompromising happiness. The condition of my mental health in Europe will depend entirely upon me putting myself out there. Getting here was the easy part of the journey. I must interact with the guy at the dry cleaners, the supermarket, the train station. I must take an hour out of my day to learn Portuguese and then try to speak to someone using these new words. It benefits me to take a bus ride, and when I see something interesting out the window, just get off and take a closer look. Why shouldn't I attend that Hans Zimmer concert coming to Lisbon this year? 
I've always wanted to get dressed up and go to something like that. Just have a great night out, breathe in the new fresh air freedom from my own constraints. How rewarding would this be for my mental health? This week's small part of my greater adventure has already had a positive impact on my anxiety. Thanks to the observations from my short time in Europe, I've begun to devise tools to help me live better as an anxious person. I'm not saying I'll be singing or dancing in public anytime soon, but I might find myself appreciating a public display of song or dance without cringing. I might begin to appreciate what so many others love about it. And knowing that my progress may someday lead to a healthy existence fills me with so much hope. If you are shy and anxious like me, I'd encourage you to see a therapist first and foremost, but I would also like you to check out some of the fun, adventurous ways I choose to work through my days. At the same time, go ahead and enjoy the high quality videos of me walking around Europe. These videos are a nice backdrop to the conversation, but they will also display some of the situations I'm speaking to. Try to imagine yourself walking down the road, sitting at the park, or walking alongside the ocean. Feels pretty good, doesn't it? Thanks to everyone who subscribed, and please comment below and tell me what you think. I would love to know how others cope with their anxiety, and if you aren't the type of person to be shy or anxious, please let me know what you think. Since this is a new channel, I would encourage everyone to check out my trailer. It helps explain why I am in Portugal and what my plans are for this channel. Each week, I will discuss how I am coping with my anxiety, how I make the most out of life being this shy, and how I will no longer allow fear to define my path forward. Please check out my Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and my blog at travelandmath.com. Thanks, everyone.